Hey there, welcome to episode 268 of the Membership Guys podcast. Today we're talking all about driving traffic from your blog to your membership. So if you're doing any sort of content marketing, whether it's blogging, whether it's podcasting, whether it's YouTube, you want to have a central hub, your main website, where this content will be available. So even if you're pushing your podcast out on iTunes, on Spotify, if you're putting videos on YouTube, you're still going to have your main website that you're also adding this content to. And this is going to be somewhere you'll be driving traffic towards. However, how do you connect the dots between your blog, your main site, and your membership? We're going to dive in to some specific ways to do that in just a sec. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. All right, so your blog is going to be a primary place for you to promote your membership, to link people off to your membership. Now, that may seem obvious, it may sound obvious. However, there are some internet marketers who will tell you not to promote or to even mention your product to someone until you've drawn them into your sales funnel. And then when the moment is right, you strike with your sales pitch. But that's nonsense. Often all someone needs in order to be ready to buy is awareness that you have a solution to their problem. Typically people whose marketing strategy relies on them keeping their product super secret in order to make sales, it's usually because their product kind of sucks and they're relying on gimmicks and high pressure tactics and smoke and mirrors in order to push you into taking action. You really have to question someone who's clandestine about what they're selling or refuses to tell you the price of something till you've gone through their high pressure funnel. Anyway, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Getting back on track. If you're making use of content marketing as part of your membership strategy, then you'll want to think about how to connect the dots between the content you're putting out there for free on your blog and getting the people who are visiting your site to then go through to your membership. So today, I want to specifically talk about driving traffic from your blog to your membership website. And there's two types of approaches for this. There's the direct approach and the indirect approach. So starting with direct methods of driving traffic. The first is using calls to actions or simple text links in your blog posts. So anytime your membership comes up, anytime you mention your membership, or there's an opportunity for you to bring your membership up within your content, then you should be obviously linking the name of your membership and what have you directly off to your membership website. That makes sense. It's obvious, right? Now, one of the best ways of actually creating those organic opportunities to refer to your membership in your content is to use your membership as a framing device. It's one of my favorite things to do. So for example, this podcast episode actually stemmed from a conversation inside the Membership Academy community where someone was asking, how do I drive traffic from my blog to my membership? And they had specifically been given a bit of bad advice that told them, don't put a link in your menu. Don't talk about it. Don't put a call to action. Don't put a banner. You want people into your funnel. And they were confused about the fact that they've heard us say that a lot of our membership sales are driven from traffic that comes via the blog. And so that was actually the inspiration for this episode. You see what I've done? I've used our membership as the framing device. Now, because I wanted to point that example out, I've used it as the reason why this episode exists. It's actually true as well. So if you're creating a piece of content, then you can frame it as something that addresses a question that came up within your membership, a problem someone in your community had, an experience that you've had in running your membership, something you've helped somebody with. So you're using it to add context to the core content you're putting out there. It's not going to change the nature of that content, but by using your membership as a framing device, as the setup, for the core bit of content, it gives you an organic opportunity to mention your membership and to link to it. Additionally, if you're using any examples within your content, 
try to pull those examples from within your membership. So if you want to give examples of the biggest mistakes people make within this industry. So 10 big mistakes people make when they get started playing bass guitar. Then what you could actually do is look for some stories, some examples from within your membership community and then weave those in to your content. So you could say mistake number one, a buying a big brand expensive bass guitar when you're first starting out. Keep in mind, I know nothing about bass guitar, even though we worked with Scott's bass lessons for years. I still know nothing about bass guitar, but just say that's a valid uh, concern, a valid problem. Then if you know someone in your community who made that mistake, you can actually approach them and say, hey, would you mind if I mention you? And then in your blog post, in your video, you can kind of say, well, Brad, who joined our membership community all the way back in 2012, he spent a fortune on his very first bass guitar and then spent the next six months beating himself up because he thought he'd wasted money or he couldn't get a tune out of it and actually the mistake was blah 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 so again drawing on your membership wherever you can it gives you that organic reason to bring your membership up and anytime you bring it up you can link to it and it also enhances the quality of the content as well because it puts it in real relatable terms for people and at the same time you're giving them an insight into the sort of things that you're helping people with in your membership day to day and that's going to make it more appealing to someone who's considering joining Something else you can do is to reference specific pieces of content or features of your membership that go deeper or further into the topic you're covering in your free content. So if you have a course or a workshop or maybe a checklist or something like that, that gives people the next step once someone has finished reading an article or listening to a podcast episode, or maybe something that goes deeper into a concept that you kind of bring up as a surface level thing within your blog. So again, let's just take our example of the top mistakes people make with uh, bass guitar, right? Maybe you've got a course on picking the right guitar, a buyer's guide to bass guitars. Now, within your article, the subject of buying your bass guitar might just be one out of 10 items that you address. So it's a subject that only really comes up once. So it's not a natural next step. You're not going to say to people finish this article and then check out our buyer's guide to bass guitars. However, at the point within your article where you're talking about that thing on a pretty much surface level, then you can kind of say and if you want to dive a bit deeper, if you're a member of our membership, we have a whole course on buying your bass guitar. All right, moving on to the next thing. So again, you're giving people those little tidbits and you're using the context provided by your free content to connect the dots to something specific in your membership that maybe someone might not otherwise become aware of. They might know you've got a membership and they might know that you've got a whole range of great courses. They might know what some of those courses are, but perhaps they didn't know that you have something as specific as a buyer's guide and you've just framed the context of why that course is useful by first pointing out the mistakes people make. So, Biggest mistake people make, one of the biggest mistakes is they get the buying decisions on their bass guitars wrong. And hey, if you remember, we've got you covered, you won't make that mistake because we've got a whole course on it. So as I said, that's something that you can do at specific points in your content to kind of give people an option if they want to dive deeper into something that you just touch on in your content. Or you do at the end of your article, the end of your video, the end of your podcast, where you point out this is the next step for anyone who wants to go further than this piece of content has taken you. For anyone who wants to actually implement what we've talked about in this piece of content, you know, again, the adage with your free content, you give away the what, you give away the why, and then you sell the how. So maybe you've got an article on you know, 10 amazing features you did not realize Microsoft Excel has. That's a really random top of my head uh, suggestion. But say you've got an article on that, you're telling people the what. Here is the what, here are some things. But if they want to go further, if they want to learn how to actually use them and get some step-by-step -step walkthrough instructions, then the how is inside the membership. So calls to actions and links within your content 
one of the most obvious, the clearest, the most no-brainer direct method of sending traffic from your blog through to your membership site. Another direct method, again, real obvious, links in your navigation, your menus, your sidebar, and so on. This sounds so, so obvious, but you'd be amazed how many people don't link to their membership within the main menu on their public site, their blog site. And often it's because they've been told not to, as we already touched on. At a bare minimum, you should have a link in your main navigation. And if your site has a sidebar, link to it there as well, ideally with a graphic. So a small banner that perhaps shows a screenshot or maybe has some bullet points with features of what the membership actually offers. So again, this should be a no brainer. Quite often people worry that they don't want to seem salesy or don't want to give the impression that they're only publishing content to get you to go to their membership. But hey, people are reading your content because they've got a problem that your content solves. So if you've got a bigger solution within your membership, why wouldn't you link to it from your main navigation, from your sidebar and so on? The next direct way of sending traffic from your blog to your membership is by including a link on the thank you page that somebody sees when they sign up to your email list. That is a prime location for a call to action promoting your membership. This is the perfect spot to tell people about what your membership offers because they've literally just performed an action that shows that they want more of what you have to offer. So you need to make sure that you're using that thank you page to make them aware of your membership. It's one of the most underutilized locations for driving traffic and driving sales from a blog to a membership. We get so many people clicking through from the call to action on our thank you page. And we've got members inside our community whose sales significantly increased once they added that call to action to their thank you pages as well. So those are the main direct methods of driving traffic from your blog to your membership site, including calls to actions and specific links within your blog posts, using your membership as a framing device, as a source for examples, referencing specific aspects of your membership that connect to what you're talking about in your content. They go deeper, they go further. And if you head over to themembershipguys.com slash 268 to see the show notes for this episode, you're gonna see some of these examples in action. Having links in your main menu, in your navigation, and making sure there's a link on your thank you page. Those direct methods are no-brainer ways of driving traffic through to your membership site. There's also a few indirect ways to use your blog as the starting point for driving that traffic. The first is via email campaigns that you send to people who join your email list. Again, as we mentioned with the content of your blog post, within the content of your emails, you can use your membership as a framing device. You can use members as examples and so on. But in addition to that, as part of the email follow-up campaigns you send people when they join your email list, you're gonna have some emails within those sequences that are straight up pitches for your membership. You're not kind of trying to weave in subtle references. You're going straight up with a sales pitch. You're also gonna to wanna to have some emails in there that highlight some specific features or where you're sharing case studies, testimonials and results, all of which link back to your membership. So you need to make sure if you're getting people subscribed to your email list that you have an initial series of emails that sells your membership. Again, if you are part of Membership Academy, we have some swipe files. So we have some literally copy and paste email sequences that you can utilize for this purpose, as well as some others for onboarding and engagement and so on. Another indirect way of sending blog traffic to your membership is using Facebook remarketing ads. So this is where you're using remarketing to show ads to people who have visited your website. So rather than just targeting cold traffic, the Facebook pixel is picking up on people who have visited your site, maybe they've visited specific blogs, and then they're showing those people ads for your membership. Now we talked all about how to use Facebook remarketing and how it all works back in episode 263. If you want to give that a listen or if you want to head to the membershipguys.com slash 263. But essentially, remarketing lets you show ads to people based on whether they visited your site and what they've done when they've been there. So if someone's read a blog post about a specific topic, you could then show a remarketing ad for something in your membership that is on that same topic, that same subject. 
Or if they've opted into your email list, you could use remarketing to move them down the funnel, direct them to your membership as the next step. And we have a whole course that goes real in depth into the specific Facebook remarketing strategy that you can use for driving member sales and improving member retention. And that's available in the Academy too. And finally, also ensure that your main site, your blog site has links to your social media accounts, your social media channels. Now, obviously, they're not going to be your top priority. If you've got the choice between getting someone to follow you on Twitter and getting someone to join your membership, you want them to join your membership. So there's certainly a hierarchy, a prioritization of which calls to action you push a little further. However, if you're driving people to your social channels, if they follow you on there, and then you're talking about your membership, you're promoting it, you're sharing testimonials, you're sharing case studies, you're announcing new content you've released, you may be showing a little bit of the behind the scenes in your Instagram stories and so on. All of that helps to nurture that relationship, to build that awareness, to build that trust. And that gives you another avenue for getting those people to click through your membership sales page and then hopefully join so those indirect ways of driving traffic via your email follow-up sequence facebook remarketing ads and also your social media channels so as we said at the beginning if you're doing any sort of content marketing you're publishing any content you're going to want to use that main website that blog where you're publishing this stuff as the central hub for sending people to your membership because your membership site content in most cases will be locked behind a paywall where search engines cannot reach it, where you're probably not going to share links to stuff on social media. And so you're not going to find it as easy to just drive traffic directly to your membership site. However, the stuff you put out on your blog will get picked up on Google. It will get shared on social. It's easier to run ad campaigns. It's easier to send out links in your email newsletter. So you want to make sure that if you're driving all your traffic to that public facing site, that blog site, that you have methods in place to connect the dots between that and your membership and you're driving that traffic through direct and indirect methods we talked about to get the traffic to your site and then hopefully get those people to sign up hope you found this useful hopefully you picked up some ideas of stuff that maybe you're not quite doing right or maybe you haven't implemented and if you are unfortunate enough to have encountered one of those dodgy outdated internet marketers who convinced you that you need to keep your membership site super super secret until someone has reached level 10 of your incredibly complex advanced ridiculous overdone funnel then Hopefully this has given you a little bit of a reality check and some ideas on how to correct course because as we said, quite often the only thing that is required in order for someone to be ready to join your membership is awareness that you have a membership. And that awareness comes from overtly promoting, mentioning and linking to your membership from your main website. That is it from me. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again next week with another installment of the Membership Guys podcast if you enjoyed this week's episode of the membership guys podcast we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com the membership academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting growing and running a membership website whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be or whether your website's already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members then the membership academy can help you to get to the next level with our extensive course library, step-by-step -step membership roadmap, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools, as well as our supportive, active community that will help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.